Do you want to know what your profession of faith in Jesus Christ is worth? Your confession of faith in Him, what it's worth? The answer is this. It's worth absolutely nothing. It's worth absolutely nothing. They come to Him on that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in Your name and in Your name cast out demons and in Your name perform many miracles? Their defense before the Lord of glory is their own works. Would a true Christian illuminated by the Holy Spirit to know the depravity of his own heart, do you think he would actually give good works as a defense as to why the Lord should let him into heaven? Depart from me, I never knew you. When he speaks about few finding eternal life, he's talking about those, um, those who profess his name. Among those who call Jesus Lord, few of them will find eternal life. So what we hear here is not everyone who says to me, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. No, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And what he's saying is, not everyone who emphatically declares me to be Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven. This is not some secret discipleship here. This is not some hidden thing. This is a person who would emphatically say, yes, I'm, I'm a Christian. He says, not everyone who says this will enter into the kingdom of heaven, which is synonymous with not everyone who says this is truly Christian. No matter how emphatically someone declares themselves to be Christian, it is not the test of whether their Christianity is true. What is the test? We go on and we see this. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Now, he is in no way teaching a works salvation. Not at all. He is not teaching that men enter into the kingdom of heaven by their ability to perform the will of God. That is not what he's teaching. If you think that, you're putting the cart before the horse. What he's teaching is simply this. Those who have truly believed do so by the power of the Holy Spirit by which they've been regenerated and made new creatures through this miraculous work of salvation and the continuing work of the Holy Spirit in their life their lives and manner of living are changed and so that the true Christian is Christian by believing in Jesus but you know he truly believes in Jesus because of the changes in his life and those changes are marked by conformity to the will of God. Whenever someone does not understand the gospel in the New Testament, it is squarely laid at their feet, the fault of it. Do you understand that? It's very, very important. Because we understand, for example, in Romans chapter 1 verse 18, something very important, that men restrain the truth. They hold it down. They do not want to understand it because of their enmity against God and their desire to live free from His rule. Men are known to be Christian by the fruit that they bear. And throughout the history, since the Reformation and on at least, it was greatly emphasized that yes, we should and can have assurance and great joy at the moment of our conversion. But that immediate assurance may be only apparent and there is a necessity to look for ongoing fruit in the life of the believer. Because the evidence that we are disciples, as we found out last night in John chapter 8, is that we continue on in His work and that we bear fruit, according to chapter 15 of John, and fruit that remains. So, in no way is Jesus teaching that salvation is the result of our ability to conform to the will of God. What He is teaching is simply this, a man that has truly been converted, regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit, will be a new creature who will live a different way. You will see the evidence of conversion in their life. Now, let's step back again. Something very, very important. The believer's life is not a continual upgrade, in a sense, without any obstacle in it. It, it doesn't go so much like this. 
as a true believer's life goes kind of like this. We do struggle with sin. We do have setbacks. We, we can go through many a troubling time. But what does the Bible guarantee us for the true believer? That he who began a good work will finish it? And that the Father is constantly disciplining those whom he loves. And we see here that salvation is not simply the work of the Son or the Spirit, but is also the work of the Father, especially in regard to sanctification. In John chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true vine and my Father is the vine dresser. He's the one who takes care of the vine. Now listen to what he says. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Who takes away? The Father takes away. Now, just exactly where does he take them? Verse 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up, and they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. There is absolutely no such a thing as a continuously carnal Christian or a continuously barren Christian or a fruitless Christian. It does not exist. Everyone, I know Jesus. Well, that's wonderful. Does he know you? Everybody wants to go to heaven. They just don't want God to be there when they get there. But I want to tell you something. You don't want to go that nasty old hell, do you? What, are you trying to get them saved based on self-preservation? You set a field on fire and every venomous snake in that field will run away from that fire, but when it does, it's still a venomous snake. The question is not, do you want to go to heaven or do you want to escape hell? The question is, has God so worked in your heart that you want God? Has God so worked in your heart through the gospel that I've preached to you that the sin you once loved, you now hate? The question is not, do you want to go to heaven? Because as I said, everybody wants to go to heaven. The devil would like to go back to heaven as long as he didn't have, didn't have to bow his knee to God. Do you see that you have no merit in yourself? And that the only way to God is through the virtue and the merit of Christ and what He did for you on that tree. Yes, I can see that. Can you cast yourself upon Him? Forsaking everything. Repenting even of good deeds. Brother Paul, what do you mean repenting of good deeds? Repenting, turning away from trusting in your own good deeds and throwing yourself upon Christ alone. Not everyone who confesses with their mouth, Lord, Lord, will be saved. 